-hmm. Okay, so it's Thursday, May 12th. I'm going to call the Economic Development Commission meeting to order. Um, did anybody have a chance to review the minutes from March 10th? Mm -hmm. Any comments or questions? Do I have a motion to approve? Do you have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Minutes are passed. Um, Mr. Cook? All right. Uh, let's I'll go in order here. Uh, with respect to the park group, uh, things are moving very quickly there. Uh, they are uh, uh, well into the demolition phase. I haven't actually been on site. Uh, Others have, you know, we did, uh, the uh, uh, Silverman group permitted the town to do an emergency uh, emergency drill there, and uh, which was really quite extensive. Uh, the, uh, uh, Kevin Kowalski, who of course heads up our emergency operations team, uh, designed an exercise with a, uh, uh, an active shooter at a school. He managed to work in a bomb and uh, some hazardous materials. So uh, <coughs> things were hopping at the, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the old Hartford site a couple of Saturdays ago. Uh, so that was a, uh, they've been in many ways very good to work with uh, in that respect. They've been, uh, they've, they've communicated well. In terms of, of their their progress, uh, they are moving quite quickly. Uh, they're, they've had regular consultations with Jamie Rabbit, and uh, I've been involved in a number of those. Uh, they've got Gateway involved, as the Gateway, of course, was the group that did the charrette uh, on the Hartford property. So their goal is to really understand what the lines are and to, and to paint within them. Not to say that we won't have our, our areas where we push back. Um, they're uh, planning to, well, they're, well, they have very preliminary things for, for both sides. Uh, uh, they're, they're planning to start on the north end first, and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw shovels in the ground on that uh, uh, early next year. So that's, that's moving quite quickly. Um, they, they've been very open to recommendations with respect to types of architecture to look at. Uh, again, uh, so far the process has been working very well with, uh, with our planning department. <coughs> um, any questions about the Hartford? Well, where are they taking, uh, when you go by, you can see the trucks going out, mm -hmm. so they take a lot of the metal out first. I, I assume that's going to a salvage dump in New Haven or somewhere? I, I, David, you're probably right. And the answer well, is I don't, I don't know, but, but uh, <coughs> you know, they got, They've got a lot to get rid of. Did uh, they talk about actually grinding the concrete on site? It, to the extent there's any work, a, a lot of that will be done. Uh, they, they're planning to do a lot of the dirty work internally while the, while the shell yeah, is right. still there. So I think uh, that, that that much I know. Uh, the specifics of how they're doing it, I'm not familiar with. They're, the timetable is by the end of September, I hear, right? You would imagine that, yeah. And this is, again, it's a privately owned company. Uh, the, this is not... Uh, uh, like the other experience we have on the north side where property spot and then it just sits there for a while while they figure out what to do. They, they know what they want to do and they've got a, a, a pretty clear plans to move forward and so uh, they're, they're not going to let their money sit there. Um, the good news in that is of course while the buildings are coming down it does mean that we can expect in, in a relatively near term <coughs> that uh, the, the kinds of things they're going to put up uh, even just on the on the north side of the property, you're likely to quickly replace the lost tax revenues from uh, the demolition of the buildings. When do you anticipate them being in front of the land use boards for? Uh, that's my guess is that that will probably, and it is a guess that the track they're moving on, I would expect they'd probably start towards the end of the summer. Uh, I don't, you know, it's it's a, not a lot happens in that world as I understand it during the summer, but. Uh, uh, they do have, again, they've hired a teams that I, I don't know the names, I'm not, not in the planning world, but uh, architectural uh, design teams that, uh, uh, that Mr. Rabbit knows well and thinks very highly of. So it's not, it's, it's, they're, they're, they're not looking for a cookie cutter approach to this. It's uh, so. Um, Is part of the first stage in their plan, do you know, to try to put those uh, where the cornfield is built on there first or? Well, you know that you've got the entrance and you've got a, a, a spot where one could put a bridge on the north side. That's yeah. that's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. that's where they're going to go first. 
It's flat. It's easy. It's it's. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's on the other side of the culvert there. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that would perhaps be residential, eh? Uh, there will be both residential and and some commercial on that space. On that space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The the uh, uh, the amount of commercial is uh, they're they're talking to a lot of people about the commercial piece, and I'm not sure mm -hmm. where in terms of, of how much will be on that side. That that's still under uh, uh, under discussion, but but there will be commercial on that. Well, side. What's the preliminary thought on the amount of residential? Do you know? Uh, I think it's something. Uh, that that's been that's been a variable depending on the commercial mm -hmm. piece, but it's 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 going to be somewhere north of two hundred fifty probably. Do you think uh, you think there'll be condominiums or apartments? Or don't don't you have a feel? It's going to be townhouses and some townhouses. Yeah, okay, exactly. On the cornfield area. Right. Okay. So that's the Hartford piece. Uh, the. Uh, the next bullet is, is the uh, Charter Revision Commission. Uh, they have they've sent their draft report to, uh, it's been filed with the town clerk and uh, it has been delivered to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, the primary focus of the, of, the, of the commission is, as you all probably know, is the, uh, the, the form of government. Uh, there's a great deal of discussion on that. Uh, the, uh, ultimately, there was a seven to four vote to recommend a town manager form of government. Uh, I think they, uh, the, the other issues they covered uh, included the possible combination of planning and zoning, uh, which, as you know, is an EDTF recommendation. <coughs> and Bill Ethier spoke very eloquently on that. Uh, Jamie Rabbit spoke in support of that. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the Commission chairs, including Fur, uh, spoke to the commission on it, and uh, uh, they, 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 their their testimony essentially was that things are working pretty well right now. So uh, I think the the end result was I think the and I, I, I'm probably <coughs> overstepping my bounds here. I am not the charter revision commission, but the general sense was uh, uh, this was not the year to tackle <coughs> that issue. Uh, it, it, it can be controversial. They wanted to stay focused on the uh, on the town manager. They also focused, as you guys know, on the uh, on the number of of boards and commissions in the charter. Uh, and uh, uh, two recommendations were made for removal. One is the human relations commission, which is out, and the other is the economic development commission. Uh, that was done. Uh, if you read the final report, with uh, emphasis on uh, on the on the on the fact that the board of selectmen uh, will have options for uh, re you know constituting a, an economic development commission uh, if if in fact it's taken out of the charter, it can be done by ordinance, or alternatively to uh, do ad, ad hoc committees as necessary for uh, economic development support. So. Uh, that's all in their final report for you guys to read as well. Um, other, uh, other than other than that, there were um, uh, there's some cleanup in the world of, uh, of the budget process. Just in terms of you know every every year we, Simsbury publishes this enormous <laughs> full page ad, which we you, you know often ends up getting run statewide with every last dollar in our budget on it. Nobody else in the world does that. Uh, it's uh, we, the, the uh, commission's recommending a system where uh, smaller notice can be published in the paper. Uh, the budget, of course, will appear on the town website, and anybody who wants it can be mailed a copy of the budget. So it, things like that. But that's, that's where it is. Uh, the next step is that the, the Board of Selectmen has 45 days to hold their own hearing on uh, on the EDC's recommendations, I'm sorry, on the CRC's recommendations, and uh, uh, then they can either, if they approve it, then uh, then it'll be sent to a referendum. If they have recommended changes, it'll go back to the Charter Revision Commission for their consideration. So there's there may be a little bit more back and forth on this. <coughs> Before we have any discussion about um, the update that Tom just provided, I just want to let everybody know that. <clears throat> I and Dave both attended um, their last 
meeting, um, and I'll let Lou speak to the letter that Chip Houlihan presented and spoke about from the chamber if you want, or I can. Um, a, a couple of things to note. Um, the chamber presented a letter um, against the recommendation of the Charter Revision Commit Commission to remove EDC as a commission. Um, I spoke against it, and I have to be honest with you, and I want to go on record, um, because it was said a couple of times by members of the commission that had they, kn a couple of them stated, had they known what the Economic Development Commission did, they wouldn't have voted the way they voted, okay? So the decision was made, okay, by individuals who were completely uninformed about what this commission does and the importance of it and they were surprised to hear some of the things that we've done as a commission over the years yet chose not to reverse their decision and continue to recommend the removal of the economic development commission from the charter i will be <coughs> attending the board of selectmen when they uh, meeting when they discuss this recommendation um you know dave spoke it, it um it's concerning that a decision was made um, with either misinformation or lack of information, and they openly admitted, a couple of them, that had they known, they wouldn't have voted that way, um, at, and yet chose to not reverse any of their decisions. Okay? Well, it also begs the question of what else they voted on that they didn't know anything about. How could they vote on something that they don't know anything about? Well, and I have to, one of my concerns um, when I spoke was the fact that no one had approached, not one member of the Charter Revision Commission, to my knowledge, approached anyone on this commission to either sit in on a meeting, have a discussion with us about what the <coughs> accomplishments are, what are our goals, what do we do, what <coughs> do we see a need for this commission or not? we were not reached out to. So a decision was made um, in a vacuum um, with not a lot of information. They were very surprised when I started listing many of the accomplishments over the years and um, shockingly didn't reverse their decision, but it's very concerning. Um, I've received a letter from a former first selectman, Peggy Shanks, um, which um, she's against this as well, and I well, can read it. Um, and you hand it out? I can hand it out to you. And it was received through Dave. And Peggy sent it last evening. Last evening, I believe. Um, and it's to the members of the Simsbury Economic Development Commission. Thoughts to the EDC considering the pending decision of the Charter Commission. Today, a special session of the Connecticut Legislature will convene to continue to finish budget deliberations. At this point in our state's history, it has never been more important for every city and town in Connecticut to be active and vigilant, dedicated, and innovative. Each must work to improve revenue, resources, and job opportunities. In, this, in a sluggish national economy, business, health services, and educational facilities are now looking for ways to improve operations in Connecticut. It is not a strong contender to attract new prospects. For Connecticut, there's a story to tell and work to do. One of the strongest vehicles for local government can be a well-run economic development commission, one that provides the local legislative body, Board of Selectmen, with valuable analysis on the strengths and weaknesses of its town. The proposed charter reno renovation of this vital part of local effort take the valuable tool away from our needed efforts. I regret that I'm unable to be at the meeting today. I have found it unpardonable for a charter commission not to afford the courtesy of discussion with government volunteers before taking uninformed action to eliminate the body. Thoughts in support of the need and potential of the EDC should be submitted to the Board of Selectmen. Respectfully, Peggy Shanks, First Selectman, 1980 to 1989. Um, Tom, could, could I ask Tom a question? Sure. Exactly what was put forth to the Board of Selectmen on that issue? How did they frame what they're recommending? What they did was they, they and it's, it's in their final report, I'll try to paraphrase it, they yeah. said that uh, the, uh, the, 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 what happened? Uh, you got the final report there. Uh, the final report talks about uh, uh, alternative ways of constituting economic development support. <coughs> uh, it, it, it was, uh, they were informed by uh, town council that uh, the Economic Development Commission could be uh, created by charter. Uh, they uh, were emphasizing the flexibility uh, of, of, 
of options that, that they were presenting. Uh, they certainly, I, I think if you ask them, uh, I don't think there would be any one of them who would say that they, they'd have a problem with reconstituting the Economic Development Commission by, by ordinance. So exactly what did they recommend to the board well, in, in the report? Well, it's on page 14 of the draft of the final report. Um, it says elimination of the Economic Development Commission. The finding was the commission recommended by a vote of 10 to 1 to eliminate the Economic Development Commission. The current commission has been ineffective in its current form and just adds another commission for any new developer to present to as it seeks approval for their project. The commission believes that the town needs to implement a more effective economic development approach to get new business and development projects implemented to grow the grand list. The key to economic development is the attractiveness of a community for both business and residency. In this regard, economic growth should be championed by all of town leadership. This task does not require any specific economic background, but rather individuals with cordial openness and the ability to direct the prospective business to the proper town agencies to rapidly respond to opportunities. The commission agreed to add the responsibility of economic development to the job responsibilities of the town manager. As such, the commission envisions the town manager having the responsibility to coordinate the various town resources to both promote economic development and respond to new opportunities. Having intimate knowledge of the various resources and activities of the various commissions involved with economic development makes the town manager the ideal individual to coordinate the various resources in a cohesive and efficient manner. It is also anticipated that the town manager would have the long-term capability to see such projects through to implementation. The commission also discussed that the first selectman, first select woman, would have a role to play in setting policy and advocating for economic development. The commission envisions a process similar to what is heard from West Hartford, that the town manager works behind the scenes with developers to get and keep things moving along, and that the mayor is the interface to the public and town advocate for change. The example was used used was the Blueback Square development process and the role each played. If required, the Board of Selectmen in conjunction with the town manager should able to quickly appoint any necessary group with the proper background specifics to the business in question. The commission recommends establishing a small stipend of 15% of the town manager's salary to the first selectman or woman to help with their expenses for the role of chief elected officer. Um, one of the points <clears throat> that I made and that um, Chip Houlihan made when he read the letter from the Chamber of Commerce was by eliminating the Economic Development Commission, there are instances where the, um, a business, a local business, a business looking to come to town may need assistance with um, the process and there is not the, without the Economic Development Commission, there's not the appropriate vehicle or board or commission to go to um, because of what can be done, whether it's the Zoning Board, the Inland Wetland Board, um, and there's really no one who's going to be an advocate um, for business. Um, and the proposal from the, the Charter Revision Commission was to have this ad hoc group formed at the will of the selectman slash town manager, if that is the form of government that goes forward on an as needed basis. And my point was, there's a lot of information to know about whether it's a study or a shred or, or whatever. And to just randomly have for six months or a year, a group of people uh, to be the point people or, um, at the whim of the first selectman or the board of selectmen doesn't seem like we're sending a great message to local businesses that economic development is important here in the community. And my point was that maybe instead of eliminating the commission that the board of selectmen and the first selectmen provide more specific direction to the economic development commission is in terms of a mission statement each year of what the priorities of the town are um, to make us more effective. So there is, a focus on what is important to the town and that there's better leadership by doing that. So Good. I'm done talking for right now. <laughs> you said that it goes to a hearing or this board of selectmen just vote on it? No, they have a public hearing that requires the like by the process to have a public hearing. And then they vote on it and then it goes to referendum. Uh, well if they if they approve <coughs> it they accept it and they, they have no changes for the uh, for the Charter Revision Commission it would go to referendum. 
uh, they can ask the Charter Revision Commission to reconsider various things or to add different things <coughs> if, they, if they so choose. Uh, ultimately, if the Charter Revision can say, no, we're going to stick <coughs> with the report, and then the board will have to decide whether up or down. So they take it all or nothing. So, yeah, that was my, that was my question, is, 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 is after <coughs> there's, there, there, there's a hearing and some discussion, um, the ultimate document that, that goes in, in, front of the, uh, in front of the board is either approved, it's in so there's no line item. That's correct. There's okay. not a line item approach. Okay. So the whole thing gets up or down and up the whole down. thing goes to reference. Correct. So is that document on the website? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. And to the extent people wanted to weigh in on that ahead of a public hearing, perhaps by writing uh, a letter, would they direct? Is there a way to direct that yeah, to I'd the send charter? It to the first selectman. Uh, okay. would, at this point, uh, the charter revision commission, <coughs> time being, is done. Okay. So, any comments or um, would have to be if you can't attend the public hearing. Yeah. That if you send a letter to the first uh, selectman, or, or, or it gets, to me. I mean, you can send them. It gets to read too, into record. We'll make sure or, that they get into the record. <coughs> yeah. So. Uh, okay. It, Ferg it, has a question first. Um, I attended the meeting with Dave and Chris, and I did not speak. I will speak at the public hearing. Just, I still, as a layman, don't understand what you're accomplishing by taking it off the charter. They kept using the word ad hoc, which I think is a kiss of death. This is a consistent thing. If you're in the business community and you can always come here, and you can listen to the women behind me, you can know what's going on in town, you can hear. I guess. The, the, the other gentleman, who had no knowledge at all, the gentleman on the left, had no, maybe this, and they talk about saving money on staff, maybe this commission should meet at 5.30 the night of planning, just like design review meets at 5.30 the night of zoning, so there's more public exposure and more people could come at that hour. But I, I just don't see, um, and the chamber letter says it all, they don't know what's gone on here over the years. And the fact they didn't change their vote, of course, only half of them were there, if that right. many. So I think the public hearing is a chance to voice and I will speak. I mean, there was one member of the commission who, who, I don't recall his name, my apologies, but who clearly stated that his concern was um, the Hartford property. And yeah. he <clears throat> based his decision on the fact that the Economic Development Commission was not proactive about the Hartford leaving Simsbury. So he chose to um, vote for the elimination of the commission because he thought we didn't do a good job. Okay, so we, ha that is an example of um, the misinformed, in my opinion, um, members who, who made a decision based on misinformation that the Hartford is a private company that chose to leave Simsbury because of business decisions, um, not because of anything that the Economic <coughs> Development Commission or the town of Simsbury did or didn't do, okay? It was purely a business decision. Um, great news is there's a great developer who's developing the project um, into something new. Um, so. You people are cheerleaders, and that's what they're missing. I, I just had a question. I just want to clarify, and it goes to the point that was made. When it goes to the Board of Selectmen, the only vote is one vote on the entire document? At the end of the day, that's correct. But it's sort of a two-step process loop. They'll hold their public hearing. Uh, they, could, they could make all kinds of recommendations back to the Charter Revision Commission saying, you know, we, we disagree with A, B, and C. Take it back, think right. about it, and, and then come and back to us. Then, uh, you know, to, to, to uh, use a legal term, then it becomes a game of chicken. Uh, you know, they either make the changes that the uh, Board of Selectmen recommends or not, and uh, and then you'll either get a thumbs up or thumbs down. Because when it goes to a vote, if you're in favor of the, the main item that they're talking about, right. town manager, you're going to vote yes, right. but whatever else is in there goes along with it. That's correct. Right. It's like Congress. Okay. That's a very it's like good Congress. point. Sound familiar? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. That's, that works really well. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The movement, Tom, from the Board of Selectmen to referendum. Now, Assuming that it's a deadlocked board, so it's 3-3, three, three, that's a no vote. A no it vote. still goes before the public, though, as a, with no, a record. No. At that point, it doesn't. That's now the end of There is a process. Uh, a petition. A petition. 10% uh, uh, of folks registered could, could get this on the referendum if it's voted down by the Board of Selectmen. Uh, 
Yes. So a no vote would have to go to petition. A yes okay. vote goes then to the public. I, I, if it's a yes vote, it goes to a referendum. Correct. Tom, it seems that from what Chris read of the recommendation, the recommendation said we want we should consider seriously a town manager. Mm -hmm. And within the description, justifying a town manager is a person who is active in the development of the city. Is That's correct. Right. Ergo, there's no need for this commission. It seems It's more of an argument, it seems, not against this commission or anything it does. This is in the job description of a town manager. Oh, they, they are. They did say that. Uh, I'm. I'm not here just so we're all. But you're a messenger. To, we to, understand. To take sides or to, but but what I I don't think if you asked if, if you ask any one of those members I think they would acknowledge the importance of the input of of community leaders into the economic development process. Uh, that. Whether or not that squares with what you're seeing right now is, is uh, uh, of course, for you guys to decide. Uh, you know, the, the one thing about this process is there are multiple opportunities for uh, public input, and uh, probably the, the next one is one of the most important. So, uh, the, uh, I, I, sorry, I had a question um, in what you were saying about. Their belief is that under, if we have a town manager, this would be under the job description. <clears throat> I don't know, and you may know better than I, uh, any towns that do not have some sort of additional person or board in addition to a town manager or a uh, uh, first selectman that's to oh, yeah. do economic there, development. There are, there but that's are, what they're recommending. There, there are, well, the, 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 with the... They're, they're recommending that, that at, at the core of this, the, the responsibility be with the, with the chief executive officer, and, and that's essentially what the, you know, the task force is recommending. Right, is the, right. So, so everyone agrees about that point. Now what we're talking about is how, how is that role supported <coughs> and supplemented and, and aided? How, how, is the, how is the process made better by the involvement of uh, folks who want to support economic development? And, uh, they're, what they're saying is that they're, uh, as I understand it, is that they're they're taking a less formal role. Uh, the uh, again, as it says, the, there would be the opportunity to establish ad hoc committees. There is, of course, always the uh, uh, opportunity for the board of selectmen by ordinance to recreate this. I think that the the concern was uh, to have sort of one solution in a changing environment didn't make sense. Tom, it seems that what you're stating that this role, important role, would be the town manager, it says conversely that the board, the, the first election does not do this job. Actually, as but I think we've all seen the towns and everything where the first selectman or mayor or whatever is very active. Well, what, is, what, what the report you just read said, Alan, was that the first selectman does in fact remain uh, up front and center in this. In fact, uh, they they were, were looking to West Hartford in the role that Mayor Scott Slifka paid. You know, he, he's he's paid zero. He has zero authority. It, it's it's it's, uh, it's it is a in many ways ceremonial. But when it comes to economic development, uh, the, the residents of West Hartford expect Scott Slifka to be leading the charge on that. Yeah, he's got his name very out in front. Right, he did. Question. Similarly, you know, when there's a disaster, uh, you, you know, what everyone here will turn to what to the first selectman, to the person they've elected. So I think I think the the, the point is that uh, the, the the their their understanding, and again, I'm uh, trying to uh, just trying to present what I heard from them. Yeah is that the first selectman would be involved in uh, uh, whether it's courting new businesses or, uh, or attending uh, uh, development meetings on the state or local basis, that's, that's the person who would be uh, present for that. I did also, um, I'm sorry, Liz, I did also um, provide the um, Charter Revision Commission when I spoke a handout about some of our recent accomplishments, yeah. but also because we spent quite a bit of time looking at other towns in our website development, um, really there are two towns that we are compared to in a lot of cases. Um, you know, West Hartford is a nice comparison, but you know, that's an apple and we're an orange, okay? We're a small town, okay? We're not West Hartford. Um, and we're compared often to Ridgefield, 
places like Ridgefield, Newtown, um, areas like that, both for schools and for the type of town we are. And they both have very active economic development commissions who have a more defined um, mission statement that um, <coughs> is very clear um, on what their mission is. And it's not as ambiguous as to grow the grand list, which is what ours seems to be. And I think a lot of it comes from leadership. Um, providing some additional direction on how to move the towns forward. Um, and I did provide them those dis um, descriptions. And um, Ridgeberry is probably a little bit more robust in terms of what they're talking about than Newtown. But those are two towns that are very similar socioeconomically to us um, and um, probably have the same challenges trying to attract businesses there versus a Westport or um, you know, uh, other areas. I'd like to go back, if I may, to uh, the planning and zoning situation. Now, my and I could be wrong in my understanding how that functioned, but both planning and zoning wanted to maintain their own committee, a commission. The, the chairs of those commissions, uh, committees testified that way. Yes. Now, who, did they reach out to the town to ask the town what the town thought? Because at the last meeting we had, uh, Mr. Rabbit said that they thought it was better to consolidate the two, as did this commission. Right. Uh, and they reversed the position. Well, we got, and, and, on, on this issue and a number of others, go ahead, Dave, sorry. No, I just wanted to finish. Yeah. None of that, is, uh, to my knowledge, was done with the CDC commission. Coming forth and, and requesting information or a position of the EDC before they made the vote. The vote was put forth I to eliminate this. the thing, and bing, 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 they voted 10 to 1. <clears throat> that was it. Well, it also was, just yeah. note, they had Economic Development Task Force members, former members, testify to the Charter Revision Commission and never once asked any one of us well, to testify to them. And the Economic <clears throat> Development Task Force was a, a task force out of this commission. Um, <clears throat> well, I think it, it, my my clear opinion is that the process was flawed. Mm -hmm. Okay, whether you agree with the EDC or you don't agree with an EDC, you can debate whether it should be town manager <laughs> and how you do it is somewhat irrelevant at, at this point in this discussion. It's clearly the Charter Revision Commission had a flawed process. The fact that they didn't come to the Economic Development Commission to ask about them, let alone what Dave just brought up, the a combination of planning and zoning, whether you agree or disagree, it's in the plan of development has been a, an ec, uh, economic development commission recommendation for probably 10 years. And it's in there. And the fact that they would see that it's recommended and not even come and ask is, is the part that um, I think was wrong. Whether, whether you agree with the EDC or not, you, we can debate that. They could decide one way or the other. It doesn't really matter to me. But the process <coughs> Is, is very disconcerting to me, and I think that is uh, what we should let the Board of Selectmen know first and foremost, um, is the process was completely flawed. And two, whatever we decide as a group, whether we think we're a, a commission that should exist or not, we can sit here and debate and then bring forward if we feel it's appropriate when it goes to the Board of Selectmen. I, my personal opinion is I think it's a, an absolutely terrible message for uh, elected officials to bring forward in this day and age to say you're eliminating the Economic Development Commission <laughs> for whatever reason. For whatever reason, I think that's not uh, correct. I did have one question. Um, what was Main Street's position to the Charter Revision Commission on that? We don't take a position on any Charter Revision recommendations. Why? Um, we just, it's been a policy. It's very similar how we don't take a position. We try not to get political. We try not to either you can take a position on everything or nothing. My board has made the decision not to take a position. Um, but you can request to the board because they meet next week that you'd like this to be put on the agenda and I can absolutely bring it up. How do we, do we request well, that through an email to Anita's you? Anita spoke yes. against it. Against. But, but yeah. Well, let's be clear though. Wait, Anita, was Anita not spoke speaking. against what? I didn't hear. Anita, Anita voted against. Uh, voted I want to be clear, though. Eliminating Anita was not doing that as a Main Street board member, I just know. like all the individuals. Okay, so. Yeah, but she has the voice of an opinion of most people. She had a conflict on the whole issue. 
It's well, like I don't think some of us carry baggage. She was not. Like she not. is a resident who's actively involved. As are yeah. She's everybody. also an officer of Main Street. Yes, and she she's is. Also, but she didn't do it on behalf of Main Street. She's also a voting member that put forth the motion. I just want to go back to my question. My question is: the Main Street is a, a, a product of EDC. You guys come to us every year since I've been involved. Uh, looking for a substantial amount of money. <clears throat> you come to our meetings and you're actively involved. I will say I can't imagine that Main Street would not take a position on that. And again, I find that very disconcerting. And if there is a commission uh, next year when the budget comes around, I personally uh, will take that into consideration. That, that Main Street just sits in the background and does not take a position on something this effective. And that's the way I feel. It, well, and people you can know, disagree. You can say so you that. Can disagree, I think that's, but I think that's um, very short-sighted. Maybe. Yeah, but are you speaking for Main Street now? Are you speaking as Sarah? I'm telling you, I think that what he just said about next year's budget, question, budget is very short-sighted. How short are you speaking? I'm speaking as Main Street, Dave. I'm still the executive director. Are you director. authorized to speak as Main Street? I can speak on, on that particular topic, absolutely. I I'm not going to speak as to whether or not my board you. has taken a position. That I would have to bring to them. I don't care about the position. You could vote. I wouldn't mind if you voted against it. I, I would have applauded that if you had a reason and a basis, because I'm not going to sit here and say, we need an EDC. I'm not saying that. I am all about this process. I'm all about where, where, where people weigh in. And not to weigh in, I would not have any problem if the head of Main Street got up there and said, you know, we get our budget from there, we go to those meetings, they're ineffective, we think there's a better way. I would have no problem with that. I have a problem with not taking a position. Well, That's my we, only point. I just want to be clear about that. That's fine. So That's when's your board meeting? My board meeting is next Thursday. Well, one, one thing and does like an to, email suffice from yes. me? Okay. One thing I, I like to get back to a point and really reinforces what Lou was saying about the process. The vote was 10 to 1. <clears throat> I mean, there's uh, implication. This was already pre-decided. 10 to 1 for the whole thing. <clears throat> 10 to 1 on that. They, they 10 voted 1 that issue. issue. That issue was yes. 10 to 1. Mary Glassman so was the, the in, so only the individual individually who voted on the record. In, the recommendations in the thing. Ten to one. Voted yes. On. Yes. Yes. Uh, ten get to one. Okay. I, I want to. What was the manager? Who, who was the manager? Was that ten? Was that unanimous? Seven to four. Seven, seven to four. four. Seven four. 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 I, I just okay. want to interject. So obviously, this is you know this is kind of a highly charged issue, and um, you know I, I agree with a lot of the sentiment that has been expressed um, with respect to the dismay with which this whole process was undertaken and I and I share in large part Lou's frustration um, with with the process and, and kind of some of the reaction to it um, and that's you know and that's all valid but you know a thought is if the existence of the Commission is being called into question then perhaps in addition to you know getting angry about the process, which is justifiable, it, it's also an opportunity, you know, to perhaps reinvent what the commission does and what it looks like. I don't know if that is best done, um, united together as a commission, or, you know, if as we're sitting here, there's seven different opinions on it. But it's certainly an opportunity, um, you know, to to be heard as to what we do. I mean, I for one think it's it's a huge mistake because they're going the absolute wrong direction. We don't need less resources with respect to economic development. We need more. I would argue the only problem with our commission is that perhaps it's too broad. Perhaps there should be more. If we're talking about moving to a town manager form of government, right? We have the first selectman, which is your CEO, and your town manager, which is your COO. Perhaps there's two commissions. And I'm making up names because I've got to refer to them as something. You've got your uh, business resource commission, which 
reports to the COO and we work with existing businesses, address their issues, and as, new, and as new businesses come online and they need direction resources, they provide that. Then you have a second commission that works with the first selectman for the sole purpose of bringing new business to Simsbury. That's a huge job. Both are huge jobs, both are very different, and I think perhaps it's unreasonable to expect one commission to be able to do all that effectively. I think at this point, I, I don't disagree with Jay. I mean, I, I'm frustrated with not only the process, but how it was done and whether or not this commission, the message it sends. I, you know, I think there needs to be you know, do we as a board want to have an opinion that we send to the Board of Selectmen in written form? Uh, is, um, you know, how do you want to move this forward? I think maybe what Lewis said, I mean, what bothers me, I mean, we could argue back and forth to the cows come home. It, it, it was seven to four for the town manager, maybe yes, maybe no. Ten to one. This was, again, it reeks of being, you know, pretty decided. You know what I'm saying? I think we should say that this is something that seems to be more to justify another, you know, item to justify necessity of a town manager, city for that, that type of government. And okay, oh, this is a good reason, and that we use that. I think that it should be a process, and it should stand on its own. And maybe that's the approach we should take. I mean, in my opinion, it's not to debate whether or not the commission should exist. It should be to con maybe voice our concerns about the way the process yeah. was. Well, that's one. That's one. At some point, well, we'd have to take a position. To, well, no, we'd I don't have know to what it would be. I don't know what it would be, but I, I think the first step is to express our frustration and disappointment in the process. We're not consulted, so forth and so forth. We're not consulted. We've got. You know the task force that was part of us that reported to the commission uh, we were not asked uh, you know there's several flaws in the process it, it, it and then do we take a position <clears throat> on because i can't do this so someone's got to make a motion here if they want something done um when is that going to all occur don't know yet uh they will probably set the hearing at their next meeting which, which is the 23rd of may so it won't be until june it, it probably it will not be until June. That's correct. I just want to know if it's before our next meeting right. or, or after our next meeting. When, How when is there any date, potential date for the referendum? Uh, that that would be November. Well, it's more concerning about getting in front of the selectmen. selectmen. Yeah. So, do we have a meeting before our uh, before the selectmen's next meeting? Let's see. Uh, that's on the twenty third. The next one would be. They're going to hold their hearing at a regular selection yeah, meeting. Yeah, it'll be at a special meeting. It won't be a special, special meeting. June 13th. Right, yeah, the second June, and the fourth. Exactly right, right. You know, Our next meeting is the ninth. Our next meeting is the ninth. Yeah, so you, you, we so won't we, have another meeting. We won't have another meeting prior to them hearing this issue. No. So we should uh, decide now. So we should decide now what we want to do, if anything. Right. I, I mean, I, I would make a motion that we send a letter to the Board of Selectmen, I believe that's the correct audience now that the commission has been disbanded. Um, yeah, oh, right. It hasn't been disbanded, or, but that's... But they are, are on hiatus or whatever they are. Um, <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, that communicates um, exactly why we believe that the process for reaching the decision that they did was flawed. And that would, cl and, and chief among that is, you could have asked us something, right? I mean, <laughs> that, all right, that's a long motion. So I guess if I <laughs> technically have to state this as a proper motion, uh, you know, I would make a motion that we send a letter to the board of selectmen that expresses our dismay with the process and now, asks for we could get a, a member of our commission, I say either Chris and or Lou, go to them and hear our side. Well, I, 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 would I would separately 
you know, kind of se separate of the motion, encourage everyone to write a letter. To write a letter ab about it at, on your own, and that might be a good place to articulate. To articulate, complicating things. I, think I don't it, understand how a letter to the first select one's complicated. The, it's if you have a vision for what this commission should do and what it should look like, then why shouldn't you articulate it? I don't know that we all have the same uh, opinion on what that looks like because we really haven't talked about it. And maybe that's something that we should talk about at our next meeting. I think it's something that we probably should. But if they're going to be meeting ahead of that the, and we're not going to have um, a, uh, a, a unified view of this is what the sitting Economic Development Commission believes should be the future of this commission and the function, then we should all at least communicate our own view of that so that, because I think it'll do a couple things. One, it reinforces the letter that we say, hey, we don't like the way you did this. And secondly, to get them to get the Board of Selectmen, the first Selectmen's office, thinking about the importance of economic development and the role that it plays in the town and in the future, what our economic development efforts look like, you know, with or without this commission. I, I have two points on that. Uh, one is a question. Uh, Normally we have a selectman liaison. Does that still exist? Or yes. Are you yes. Sean. 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 He hasn't been here in. He was here at the last, the last meeting. He was here. Okay, I wasn't here. Okay, because right. I would think that person would be able to articulate w what they've heard and, and what the commission has done as their experience for whatever he may say. Hey, those guys aren't doing anything, whatever the case may be. But that liaison would be able to provide some information mm -hmm. uh, to the. Um, board I would think to uh, I think today we, we can just go down and, and give our own opinion Did everyone get a minute or so just to give your opinion and I think we should have a vote as to whether we as a commission feel that it should be uh, a commission that exists and and let the board of selectmen know one obviously we should write a letter about the process but I think we should also let them know whether we agree that it should exist or not exist um, because that saves a lot of effort if, if we voted not to exist. So. Okay, so we have a motion for a, letter. for a letter to the Board of Selectmen to express our dismay with the process that the Charter Revision <coughs> Commission used to determine um, whether or not the Economic Development Commission should be in existence or not. Okay, so do I have a is that second. the correct motion? That's the motion. Well, 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 You've restated the motion. Discussion. Yes. Yeah, I'm seconding it, so now discussion. Is there discussion? Did they ask? To me, the when they voted to combine the planning and zoning. Did they come talk to planning and zoning? Yeah, yeah, we. That's, yes. that's the difference. They the decision for you was made in the dark. Right. Okay, that, planning and zoning went in and testified their opinion right. about. They interviewed us. Yeah, they. Interviewed now, us. I did alert Mark that this was going on, yes. but, but I did was not asked by the Charter Revision Commission to. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know. I think we should be very clean in what we're going to do. The fact we're dissatisfied with the process. Okay, so be it. Send a letter. That, that's to me. That's not really the issue we're talking about here. Well, the, well, well, okay. well, there is, but but that that's just, you know, we could be a petulant child and write that letter too, right? So, but that's not my point. My point is that we should be crystal clear in how this commission feels the charter should read or not read that's going forward. We either want to have it in the charter. Oh, we don't want it in the charter. And well, that, that should be the decision, I that'll think. That'll be the second That's motion. going to be the second That's thing. correct, but that's okay. the important motion. Okay. Right, so that's the second thing. So is there any more discussion about the motion that Lou seconded regarding writing the letter to the Board of Selectmen regarding the process? No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. I will write that letter. Now, is there another motion on the table regarding... I don't... Yeah. Uh, I'll do a. Uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, that the Economic Development Commission uh, should let the Board of Selectmen know its position that the EDC should exist within the charter as is. I'll second that motion. 
Any discussion? I so yes. yeah, I think I think I'd like everyone just to kind of go down and give their opinion that people okay. may like it. I threw it out there merely as a to get the motion on the floor. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess my only my only thought is with with the as is, because I'm not I'm not exactly sure what that means because honestly I do believe there should be um, I really do think there should be two commissions, kind of <clears throat> along the lines that I could have previously discussed. I, I, I think it would probably be easiest to first say this one should exist and once it still exists we could then right you know right, right. i think we, yeah we, we logistically get, logistically i think that's kind of the order of operations but because if you don't exist then you can't be but you, but you can't vote it any other way other than as is right we're not gonna right. we're not gonna all of a sudden talk we about can't alter ourselves right. and say right. that's right yeah. Yeah. yeah it's gotta be like that. at yeah. some point in the future you could <clears throat> right like that. so yeah, I just want yeah. That to, you think but, it's important to have the EDC continue to be a commission that's part of the charter? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Dave? Oh, I definitely do. I think <clears throat> I just feel strong about it. Okay. Part I, of the charter. Part. How they rearrange it, whether they have two commissions or six commissions, that's irrelevant. It should be part of the charter. Okay. That, to me, is the issue. Lou? Uh, I agree that uh, it should be part of the charter. I've been on it for... Uh, many, many years, and, and it has done very good things. There are examples that I think have been cited along the way, um, and there are a lot more of them. Uh, it, it depends on how we're running it year to year, the relationship with the town, uh, staff, and, and how that all works, but it is uh, effective at times, and it is ineffective at times. But uh, my belief is that it's something that should remain on the chart. I think we have to bear in mind uh, we're talking about consolidations of other committees. We're an appointed committee, the other uh, are elective committees. Uh, I've been back eight years now. Um, it seems we have done some good things and some things I think may be redundant or not. We're fighting an uphill battle with happening in the state of Connecticut, losing businesses the taxation, all the macro things that are in place in the state of Connecticut, to think, you know, I think West Hartford's a one-off. That just the unique set of circumstances. Um, I think the commission should exist. It should probably still be appointed. We can do more good than harm. Carolyn? That, that was excellent. <laughs> I like everything very you cool, said. Very yeah, um, I, and I agree with Lou too that, you know, at times we've been very effective and at times we've been ineffective, uh, but I feel like we haven't been challenged. And, and it's really the leadership that I think, their confidence, we don't get the, I feel like there may not be as much confidence in our committee, our commission, and therefore we're not getting opportunities to really show. We have the, a huge talent here. We have diversity. We are uh, representative of, of our town and of our workforce. We have businesses here in town. We believe in this town. We're part of this, this business culture in town. Um, so I think we have a branding issue <laughs> for our commission. Uh, I think we need to um, make clear our position and and how effective we are um, and I mean the website would have never been done without <laughs> this commission um, with the guidance and leadership uh, which has improved the town tremendously in our message and our vision and our in our brand um, I think we are um, missing some opportunities uh, to be more effective and I, I you know it's been a long time since we've had somebody come and talk about their project or or um, give us an update I feel like um, that I miss that um, and I hope we get more opportunities to and, and is there another forum that the public could come and talk and, and express their concern and get our feedback I don't think we're I think transparency is huge right now uh, with any government I think we want to try to um, put together a commission that um, allows that discussion and that public uh, feedback and I don't know if there's a commission that is like ours that provides that transparency and I think it'd be doing the town disjustice to, to eliminate this group what you know the what the commissioners change but um, I think this is a, a, a need of, for every town not just Simsbury okay. so I'll be honest I struggle with our effectivity <laughs> um, 
you know, I, uh, we're not, you know, to get any project done in town, they don't have to come here. They can just totally skip us, right? A, an endorsement letter from us to the board of, to the, whoever we usually send them to, the board of selectmen or any of the land use boards. I don't really honestly know how much weight that holds. So, so no one has to come here. The money that we endorse, it's not really even our money. It's the board of selectmen's budget. So it's really not even, we don't really have any budget. So I really struggle with really how effective we can really be. We only meet once a month. So to get anything really done, the town went and put together the Economic Development Task Force, which was a very effective body, and they went and got a whole bunch of stuff done because mm -hmm. they met more often, they had more energy, they, they, it was, they were effective. And so, you know, I, I really struggle with, you know, if, 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 we, if we reinvent ourselves somehow or had, had a, uh, some, found some way to be more effective, I, I could buy it, but, but I have to say in its current form, I'm, you know, I guess I'll take the unpopular position of I kind of agree with the charter. I mean, I kind of agree that you know, in our current form, I don't, I don't really know what we do, really do. So one thing. I now I'd love to be. So I would love to. Maybe you can refresh. Maybe you can refresh my memory and say, "I oh, remember this, remember that." But I struggle with it. No, no. I, I'm just going to say, as of very recent, we have new leadership, and that may be something that changes. It, it may. It, it may. may. I don't. Know. No, I, I, so I, like I remember we did the bus tour that was good right we did the bus tour we used to go down and man those booths at that thing those were, those those things were good um, but beyond that I kind of struggle at what we really do you know what I mean the photography contest was good that was great that, that was well, great. I, I, I just, take, no, that was an idea the, like we didn't really I mean it was right an idea, the website well you know really the good. website what I'll I'm gonna take credit for some of us on this board who participated in the website process yeah, that, that was, would that not <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I share, you know, Chuck brings up a valid point. I mean, I share some of his frustration. I, and I think, the, I think the way to be more effective would be to keep the commission, keep it in the charter, and make a legitimate, real effort to reinvent what it does than if we were to support removing it and then try to get it back in mm -hmm. that's you know so I, I mean I think economic development is hugely important for everywhere particularly Simsbury and I, I share Chuck's frustration with you know kind of what we've been able to accomplish and I think a lot of that has to do with th there's a few things I think it's it's not specific it's too much we, we probably need to be do. We probably need to split things up. There, there's a whole bunch of things we could do. This is not the. This is not the meeting to discuss it. But I think. I think the point is. Um, I, I think we have a better opportunity to um, to accomplish that if there is a commission who who devoted to economic development that is in the charter. Then if it just gets eliminated, and then we have to try to cajole someone to create something from scratch. Yeah, I guess my, my main put also is like, I mean, it's difficult for me to envision any incarnation of this board that would be like out promoting, the, 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 the piece of like promoting the town and like recruiting new business, I have a hard time envisioning a board that meets once a month of volunteers really, really doing that. No, I agree. As opposed to, you know, you know, someone who's, who's who's hired and paid and it's like it's like their job or, or it's you know that in my mind would be a more effective thing um, and and um, you know you know I, I guess I just look at the, the economic development task force right that was like a ad I guess that was an ad hoc committee but they seemed very effective right they needed to go get something done they wanted to put together this, they went and did it so you know I, I, agree, I agree with everything you just said um, I think we should have someone whose job, whose chief job is to bring new business in town. And if we're, and then, but, but here's what I'm thinking. If we do move to a new form of government, and we have a town manager who becomes the COO of the town, well then, shouldn't the first selectmen, shouldn't one of their, their very few responsibilities be economic development? So. Perhaps we have 
a de facto head of economic development. Now, the only concern is that this is an elected position and that it's not necessarily someone who's well equipped to do that because it's done by election, not by appointment or merit. I don't think it's, I mean, I, I think what Chuck articulated is the ideal way to do it and the preferred way to do it. I've been beating that drum for as long as I've been on this commission that we need to pay a real person who has a real Rolodex to really do this. And it's fallen on deaf ears. It fell on deaf ears here. It fell on deaf ears with members of the, my own party of people that I ran with when I ran for Board of Selectmen. No one wants to do it because no one wants to spend the money. That's, that's a flaw. But we can't just do nothing, right? We can't just do nothing. So, well, I, I mean, I, I agree with absolutely everything Chuck said, but we can't do nothing. It wouldn't be perfect. So, so do I? Are you you're okay. finished? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so could do you I read have? The, could you read the motion, please? The second motion was that the EDC should um, also write a letter in support of continuing to have the Economic Development Commission as part of the charter. Um, period. Right. Yes. Um, so do I have a second to that motion? I second. Do um, any any further discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So noted. Um, I will write that. Both of those one letters. Dissent. One dissent. Okay. Um, so. If you all excuse me, we are interviewing potential town clerk candidates this morning. So I have to. Who's retiring? Carolyn Kyler. Oh my goodness. Many, many I years. better go get my list of reports from her now. Before you um, leave, excuse me. Are you leaving? <laughs> May I? <laughs> Do we all ask the question? That's so fast. I want to ask Second. the question. Second okay. the motion. It's on a different subject. It's on a different subject. It's on an action subject, which these two end guys would like to hear or not like to hear. Have you heard anything about a, a big reduction in force going on down at Dino? Uh, no. We've heard that uh, they are. Uh, they are facing some challenges with respect to orders right now. Uh, we've been in regular contact with them on that, and they are, uh, um, they, they've, they've made some arrangements with shifts, but we haven't heard anything about a major layoff. Well, you just heard it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and that's been, uh, we met with them. Uh, we just met with uh, the Edson Bickford Realty folks. Uh, that's different. I, I know a lot of, but just right. in terms of one of the things that's happening is that there are a whole lot of contacts developed uh, in large part. Sarah's been very involved in that, uh, uh, just reaching out. Yeah, but don't mix the two times. Well, the two I'm separate things. No, two very separate okay. things. And, and, right. and there is a, that business has its challenges, there's no doubt about it. Okay, who goes first? Me. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It's not you, it's me. <laughs> okay, you know what? We're not going to have a quorum in a minute. Do we have to vote on anything? Do we have to vote on anything? No, we don't have to vote on anything. I did take a shower. Okay. I'm two seconds in it. I did, I washed my hair and everything. Okay. Um, we had an absolutely phenomenal attendance at our April 28th historic sites free bus tour on Native American and their influence on the Farmington River at the Ellsworth Center. We had almost 60 people and it was terrific. We had a, a Native American archaeologist speak, Lucian Lavin, and it was wonderful. Our bus tour on Saturday. No, I can push this to that. It was glorious weather. We had a terrific time and we had 40 people. So. We're very excited about that for this year, and then we will continue to plan for the fall and next year. Um, as soon as I'm done with my cute little thing, I need to get to Cromwell. It is the Central Regional Tourism District's brochure swap. So our brochures, and I do have some Simsbury stuff in my trunk that is, is going out there. And there are usually 60, 70 people that swap. The sad part about the swap this year is that we always used to get our brochures in the welcome centers and anybody that was there, welcome center representatives were there. Um, the governor and the legislature in their infinite wisdom have decided not to man them. 
So it's very difficult now to get brochures in there. So they're not going to be as many and certainly as frequently fixed. So that is telling you that there's still a huge problem with the governor and the state about what is, is the future of tourism. So far, regional tourism is still in the budget, but one does not know what will happen and how much the uh, state is going to diminish their 15 million. It's now contemplated to be 7 million. So we'll see what happens. But there's still me hanging around to, to at least promote this area. Um, we just had our last meeting about the Simsbury Triathlon, which is the 22nd, and we still have a couple things to do. And there are about 140 people signed up individuals and um, and teams so those things will get done and hopefully we'll have fabulous weather in in terms of our promoting right now the, th the two three other Simsbury things that we're pushing hard right now is the um, open art studio which is this weekend Simsbury artists and then um, the fountain fundraiser and then last but not least Tugamot music festival so that's where we are for about the next three, four weeks. Okay. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. And sorry for leaving. Um, before you go, if no one has an objection, because we do have to just quickly discuss something that we have might need to vote on, um, the photo, c can I move that up in the agenda before? Does anybody have an objection? No? Okay, great. So the photo contest was supposed to be judged at the end of May. We'd like to extend that through the summer to get additional photos because um, we need them. So does anybody have an objection to having the voting on the photo contest changed from the end of May to the end of September? You have to have a shirt. We should. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> We'll be around. We'll be like around by then. Do you have to vote on that. <laughs> well, because it was a an initiative that we had. I mean, I. Just Do, does this? Vote? No, <laughs> no money involved, It'll Dave. Okay, I'm fine. I just want more pictures. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. How many Take all you want. Do, do we have? We have a show. We right. have probably um, fifty. So far, they're fabulous photos, and I want to thank the people who have participated in them. But the winter wasn't as pretty as it normally is. <laughs> I, mean, I hate to say that, but there was no snow. So you're extending it more for the, the types seasonal of for the seasonal. types of seasonal pictures that we want. So, um, I think it's unique. all in favor? Oh, aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. Thank you very much for staying, Lou, for that. All right, okay. Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very quickly, um, I'll echo everything that Nancy said. Um, Main Street is also working with the triathlon. Um, we are one of the partners for the Fountain Bash that's going to be happening with the Historical Society. We've done it every year. Main Street actually started the Fountain Bash to get funds to keep the fountain going. Um, as Tom Cook mentioned, uh, I'm still continuing to do business visitations with the First Selectman's office. Uh, Tom, Lisa, and I just met with EB Realty, um, and they have some crossover because uh, the president of EB Realty is also uh, counsel for EBI. So there's a lot of um, overlap, you know, in, in, within the different and good communication within the different. Com um, the three entities. Uh, one of the things we did is got an update on their powder forest projects. Um, uh, they've already done some land clearing. You know, it looks like uh, they've already been before the land use boards and commissions for some approval. Um, they are still marketing the 70,000 square foot mixed use, you know, um, office retail medical arts space that they're planning, which is the phase one. Um, or I'm sorry, the first parcel. The second parcel, as you guys know, had been sold to Seabury. Um, they just finished a huge renovation in Bloomfield and it's taken a little bit, so they are going to be returning their attention back to Simsbury, but the market is such that they feel that they might add up to potentially 100 extra units for the assisted living. Um, so they'll be nailing that down more specifically as they start to move forward with their plans. Um, and then the third parcel was you know, some sort of townhomes, apartments, et cetera. Uh, we just finished our uh, innovation, our second annual innovation fair on April 30th. Uh, we had a fantastic keynote speaker who was the consumer um, consumer products. He does the automobiles, come out and speak at the high school. Uh, the library, which was one of the three sites, it was the high school, the library, and the historical society, had 650 people come through for the innovation fair day. Um, we are not going to do a third annual innovation fair. We've decided that it becomes less innovative if you continue replicating it. <laughs> so 
Um, <laughs> we're going to be moving forward with something different. Uh, initial talks we met yesterday to do a revamp. We're talking about potentially doing an app contest. Um, you know, so um, that's cool. I want to do some sort of tech contest, and we would have some sort of prize. And so we're going to be looking at what you know what of what is available out there, see what we like, and then try to hone it down. But it's changed, it will be competitive and a lot of fun tech-wise, so. We need to um, get some geotags for Simsbury. Well, we, there's there's a lot of stuff. We're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna be able to test the apps, hopefully vote, and there'll be cash, you know, so it's really exciting. But that's what we feel would be a nice change from having done the fair a couple of years now. Um, I have um, spearheading the Main Street Investment Fund grant. Uh, the first selectman's office called a meeting. I'm working with Tom Roy, Jamie Rabbit, and uh, Jeff Shea. Uh, it's due April 31st. Uh, the project is going to be uh, finishing the streetscape because it has to be tied to the town center plan, et cetera, et cetera. So um, we're looking for up to $500,000 in funds to finish the streetscape. So um, that's moving forward. We got the board of selectmen approval unanimous. Um, this past Monday. And then finally, um, just a reminder, we also do things like this. Um, we had a really successful grand opening um, for Maher's Paint in the North Village. We had a great article on it. Uh, special thanks to uh, State Representative John Hampton, uh, Deputy Selectman Chris Kelly, Cheryl Cook, and Elaine Lang, who showed up with a crowd to, you know, to do the opening. Um, and then the final thing I'd like to just say on the record, even though Lou is not here, two things. Uh, the first thing is that I will hopefully receive the email from Chris and take this back to my board. Um, but I will tell you that to be reprimanded for something that your board just voted on today um, that my board hadn't answered, I, you know, is, is an issue for us. And then the second thing is just a reminder that although we are funded through the EDC budget, you don't give us the funds. <laughs> it's not like, we come, you put us in, you know, we make our case to the Board of Selectmen every single year. Um, it's not like the EDC just recommends the number and then we're put in. So I just want to make that clear that we still, there's another step. We're funded through the Board of Selectmen. It comes through the Economic Development Commission line. So I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Thank okay. you. Um, new business, because um, this wasn't written at the last meeting. Um, Mark Deming um, notified the town clerk on March 30th that he's resigning as chairman of the EDC effective July 1st or sooner, provided um, when his replacement is secured. I have not heard um, if the Democratic Town Committee has appointed anybody to replace him. Um, does anybody have any other old or new business? Do I have a motion to adjourn? Second? Second. Second. Okay. Motion or Done. second. Have a great day. Enjoy Enjoy the weather. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Wow. This is like record breaking. I'm going to Hobart. <laughs> no, that's what I was way shorter. That was way shorter. <laughs> that's true. And I had coffee that one. I didn't have coffee today. I think on uh, Peggy Shanks's letter, yep. she should decide if she wants that to go to the water select office, yeah. right? Right. Okay. You, you take care of that with her. I don't have, yeah, I can shoot her an email. Not this She's weekend, out of though. Town today, so. Well, I'm out of town. Yeah.